Hello. Uh, this is Paul. Uh, I'm the chairman uh, of uh, Qualification and Examination Board of uh, HKICPA. I'm the audit partner of Massage CPA Limited. I am also uh, the reviewer of the case questions. So uh, thank you for the invitations for me to share with you uh, about the case requirement and also the expectations of the, uh, uh, of the initial setup of the case questions. So uh, I believe all of you should have already have the information regarding uh, the backgrounds uh, of, the, of the case. So therefore I'm not going to go through word by word of the case requirement. And I, I would like to highlight some uh, important feature and also uh, the, uh, we we'll say, uh, the, the, the expectations uh, from, uh, from what uh, is expected from the students or for, from the participant to this case competi competitions. So uh, Galaxy Health International Limited is a pharmaceutical uh, company established over 20 years. So in the case, it was assumed that the company grew uh, growth, uh, successfully and listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange five years ago. So uh, there is a wide range of coverage in the geographical markets, say in Japan, USA, Germany, and France. And, and the fifth market, which is the company operate, is in the PLC, our mainland China. So uh, Galaxy has two major uh, uh, production center, one in Hong Kong and another one in the USA. So actually, its product can be uh, divided into two bot groups. One is patent, uh, patented product, and the second one is genetic, uh, generic products. So the student may uh, say, the participant may, may, may say, what is uh, uh, the difference between the patented product and generic products? I, I can take it, uh, you can say it for the patented product. It is uh, the, the production is po protected by a patent that is other uh, competitor in the market cannot use the, uh, we'll say the same formula from the company to say uh, to sell or to, man to manufacture and sell a similar product to affect the company's uh, 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 patent interest. For generic, actually uh, for the product, because due to the technology change, it is not protected by the patent, it's already after the patent period. So, so uh, every other uh, competitor in the market can produce the similar or, or actually the same product and to compete with the company. So you can see that there is a uh, different in feature, different in market, and also maybe there is an impact on the pricing of the company's product. So currently Galaxy is facing some challenge and it needs help from, uh, uh, from you. So uh, in the case, we are assuming you are working as a team head of healthcare advisory uh, department in Universe Consulting and Advisory Limited. And if some say a uh, student may have a, had a chance to participate in last year case competitions, I would like to draw to your attention to a difference. In last year, uh, I would say it is assumed there is a CPA firm to provide a business proposal uh, to the last year's uh, 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 case company. But however, in this year, it is not a CPA firm, but it is a commercial consulting and advisory limited advisory firm. So there is a little bit difference. And I will go, uh, uh, go through the, the, the difference in a later part of my presentations. So in the case, we assume that Universe is one of the leading consulting and professional service firm in Hong, in Hong Kong with more than 400 staff. And most of the key members of the firm and also for the team are HK CPA members, which is the company provide a comprehensive range of service, including strategic consulting, accounting outsourcing, financial reporting advisory, tax, internal audit, and compliance advisory. 
you can see that a professional uh, 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 consulting advi advisory firm, they, they have no audit department. Okay, they are not providing all this thing, uh, audit service and they cannot sign off audit report. So you are required to identify, in the case, to identify Galaxy's challenge, assess the risk, and recommend the strategies to assist Galaxy to implement the proposed solutions. And it is very important because in your proposal, you have to present to Galaxy in the context of a professional consulty, uh, consultancy firm. So you are say actually you are presenting an idea uh, to Galaxy on how Galaxy is to, uh, to, to face the challenge to, 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 uh, to overcome or to growth, uh, to overcome the, the, the difficulty and to growth in the near future. But you are selling, you are selling a proposal about your future services. Actually, the services is not yet why, but you are selling a proposal. I think it's very really critical, and we are expecting uh, the, the, the student can uh, uh, say emphasize on that. So for the requirement, there is for all candidates, you have to identify and analyze Galaxy's problems, opportunity, and suggest feasible strategy for Galaxy, and indicate how Universe, which is the consulting firm, can help Galaxy to implement the strategies. So that means that after you present the proposal to Galaxy, you have to ensure that Galaxy will buy in your idea and also buy your services. So you have to advise Galaxy on the issue regarding, uh, there is a, uh, uh, in, in the case question, there is a specific issue. It's a negotiating a contract to supply a patented Galaxy product in Luxembourg from the view of corporate best practice. It is to, say it's not just making money, right? There is some, uh, the, the topic may have this best practice whether to do or not, or how to do it, okay? So the, the, for the candidate have to uh, uh, think deeply about that requirement. And for the Hong Kong undergraduate and mainland undergraduate student, uh, you have to review and make recommendation on Galaxy treasury management and dividend policy. And you can find the relevant information in the case, and you have to, say to 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 grab uh, the required information and make your uh, uh, reasonable assumptions in making the strategies uh, and recommendations and you are also have to review Galaxy's foreign exchange and interest rate risk and suggest also the appropriate mitigation measures okay and in your report you have to write a 15 15 page business pro proposal starting with an executive summary of no more than three pages. And the scenario is that you are working in, a, uh, you are CPA, working in a consulting firm and also preparing a proposal to, to submit to bid for on a tender. You can see that we are uh, uh, put a very strong emphasis on this and you have to observe this requirement. So therefore, there is a little bit suggested compo component of the proposal. Firstly, you have to simply, sim, uh, simply introduce the background and experience of your firm. So to make, that, to make sure that the audience of this proposal may be for the, it is a board of directors, it may be the CEO, CFO, to know more about your firm. And also you have to tell the clients what is their issue on how you are going to identify their problems in the memo. And, and then you have to map what are your, your proposed solutions. And your proposed solution should be, it is doable. And in particular, commercially makes sense to the issue risk opportunity identified. It. Not just to, 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 to make, mention some way is, uh, we say wonderful, but actually it is not uh, 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 applicable to the case or just it is not commercially uh, feasible or commercially makes sense. And then you have to uh, do a risk assessment on, uh, because the risk assessment is how uh, 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 the company to implement the strategy they may have a risk and also how the firm's uh, service offering can provide it to the client. It may come from your, say, you may assume you're on an advisory 
But if you identify any tax, accounting, issues, internal control, ES3, you can call uh, 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 the help, uh, call upon your colleagues in other uh, department to assist you in preparing the proposal and delivery of the services. And the most importantly, you have to tell the client what is the timeline, whether say it's a feasible and also to prioritize your proposed solutions, not just put say 10 solutions, 100 solutions on your proposal and without uh, uh, telling the client which. So when you are going to do that, in particular, say in what sequential order or if the client's resources is limited, how they are going to prioritize their, their, uh, their proposed solutions. So uh, let's have a look on, the, on our professions in Hong Kong and how the consulting firm in Hong Kong operate in winning a new client. Um, HICPA is an internationally recognized, uh, say, world-class top quality professional body. So in within HICPA, we are not have just only have the we call it CPA firm. At the same time, we have also our uh, members uh, 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 in practice and also our members in the consultant area. Because the, the, the QP, which we would like to say, the entire setup of the training, development, or and the examination of QP is to train our future graduate or future accountant to be the critical thinker, problem solver, potential leader of the business world. And in particular, we are talking about, say, an accounting plus concept. Actually, because the accounting is the uh, is the is the fundamental is the fun fundamental of a business is the language of the business actually from the accounting from the accountant we can build up from our say our knowledge our professional knowledge our technical skill and in particular our ethics standard to respond to the challenge to the to the world and help our clients to grow currently we have more than uh, 47,000 members. And you can, you can see that we more than, say we have more than 60% is member in business. And we have some, uh, around 20% is mem member in practice, which is member in CPA firm. So this is a, another slide is regarding our members in practice. So you say in Hong Kong, we have close to 2000 CPA practice. And this is specific for your information. Okay, for so, uh, there is a typical structure of a uh, international firm, and this structure can be an international CPA firm or an international advisory firm. And you may aware that that uh, recently there is a uh, one of the major international firm is going to say to spin off or to split their uh, we call it a CPA firm, the audit practice with their consulting practice. And I would say the audit practice and the consulting practice would, would, in terms of international setup, would be quite very similar. They will start with a global office, which is to identify the entire global strategies to ensure the consistency of the quality of service for the protection of the, for their global name. And then they will structure into a regional office. The regional office is to coordinate the service offer in the region. I think it's really critical, uh, critical because today uh, we are not just uh, doing our, say, uh, our professional service or uh, in Hong Kong. And myself, just like myself today, I'm in the mainland China in Hangzhou. I'm working with our mainland China colleagues on delivery of a number of projects and also for the audit of uh, for the audit assignments. So the regional office will be supported by the local office, and in particular. For the local office is to deliver the service and to build the local kind uh, 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 connections. And then I'm going to say just a, a, a talk about on how the hierarchy or the gray structure of an international consulting firm. So normally they will be because today uh, for for even though for our my firm and also for our, those inter, major international firm. We are starting to uh, uh, start the relationship with our colleagues as when they are 
just maybe an intern. We offer a number of intern opportunity to the university students so that to build up the next generation of accountants. And then when they say a uh, graduate, they will join the consulting firm. We we'll call it is because in our case, a consulting firm is not a CPA firm as a junior consultant, or we call it analyst. And then when they grow up, they will become senior and then become a project manager, project leader. And finally, it depends on the structure whether they will become a partner or a director of the, of the consulting firm. So uh, I also a little bit introduced a little bit on the departmental structure of an international firm in Hong Kong. So for the, for the sake of uh, campaigners, in this case, I will assume the firm, or for this slide, I will assume the firm, they will still an assurance department. We call it uh, maybe a more traditional terms, we call it audit department. But in our case, but in our case, we still have, we only just focus on a co professional consulting and advisory firm. It well, would not have any assurance department. But you can see in, in, in this chart, I have highlights in red. There is a very important department. We call it quality assurance or risk management. No matter, because we are professional accountants, no matter whether we are providing advisory service or we call it the consulting non-advisory service, we have to ensure our quality will be on the higher standard. We would also observe the risk of our service to be performed. It may be a business risk or it may be a professional risk because there is a risk for us to making uh, 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 an inappropriate professional advisory. Then we will come up with professional uh, 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 obligations. So risk management is really critical in uh, no matter is a CPA or a advisory firm. So uh, in our case, we we have our tax, accounting and outsourcing, advisory or other consulting service. I'm not going uh, to go into detail on that. And uh, I believe you can uh, say do a say quite an easy research from one from any one of the major CPA firm from their website, you can see more about their service is, uh, that can be uh, provided. Okay, I would like to introduce a little bit on how the engagement team structure. Normally, there will be a kind service partner at the top. The kind service partner is as the, I would say, prime contact point for the kind relationship management because uh, we are not only delivering a service, we are also building a professional relationship with the kinds. And in particular, the kind relationship uh, is that it's ensure that we will know the need of our kind. We can evaluate and coordinate how the team or the service line can deliver the, the appropriate service uh, to, the, to the clients. Okay, I can see there is some q and I will uh, uh, say uh, respond to uh, uh, later sessions. So uh, I will continue first and later on I will give the response. And, and then for the client service, it may be at the same time, it is the service engagement partner, which is depends on whether the, 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 the size of the client, but, may, but for most of the case, the client service partner is just the one who know the, the, the CEO, the node, the chairman, but he may not be the most appropriate person to deliver the service because he may not be the expert of that specific, a specific uh, service area. So the kind of partner may, from their partnership or in the firm, to identify the right person to be the service engagement partner. And the service engagement partner is to determine the overall, overall approach in delivering the service. And then we will have the service engagement manager because the service engagement manager is to be more on a day-to-day -day basis, working closely with the client's key staff member. And we know that no matter it's audit or non-audit professional accounting service, we are on a team and we have to support by our execution team members. And they will work with a little bit on ground level uh, to deliver the service to the clients. So there is a typical day is on this uh, team setup. And I think it's something I would like to 
I would like to highlight that uh, the critical for a firm to accept uh, uh, engagement is not just a client come and then we prepare a contract and then we sign the contract with the client. Because the first four, as I mentioned before, risk assessment is critical. So therefore we have to build up the initial relationship with the client. We understand what is their service need and our service capability. And then we do, we do the initial risk assessment, including the, the KYC, because in today, there is uh, more and more emphasis on your uh, KYC, know your clients, in particular for the anti-money laundering. I will cover a little bit in the later sessions. And also to ensure that there is no conflict of interest because in our providing our professional service, independence, objectivities, uh, we have to observe the professional ethics requirement. I think it's something that is really important. So before we present our proposal to kind, we have to ensure that we can do it. Uh, firstly, we have to ensure that we know what is the expectation and know we can do it and also know there is no conflict and we know the background of the client. And therefore we can go for, say for example, for the local offer acceptance. And then if some is risky kind, we'll go for international or global acceptance. And then we can, at that moment, then we can only issue our tender or our service proposal to confirm with the client. Okay, it is the first, uh, I try to uh, address uh, some of the, the, the Q&A. How to win a client or how to differentiate your proposal with others. I think first of all, you have to know your clients and also which is your stand from the shoe of the client and you have to stay stay your understanding clearly in your proposal and also in your presentations. Otherwise, the client, your client may say that you, 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 you know nothing about me and how you can provide the good service. And also, you have to know who are the audience of your business proposal. It may be audit committee, it may be board of director, CFO, CEO, different people, uh, different department or different background may have their, say, different appetites. So you have to think very clear, uh, uh, carefully on how you are going to uh, address your proposal. And another one is that we are offering solutions, but not offering just services. Say how we are saying that because we have to identify the entire need of the company, and then we have to identify the risk and we have to uh, propose a solutions or strategies with uh, say to cover the most concern of the clients. Uh, service is just to resolve the short term need of the client. For example, client need a tax filing service, client need an accounting and outsourcing service for their bookkeeping. But what is solution is that we are trying to identify um, in a more, I would say more or medium to long-term need. And also say, for example, today, the client, if it's really small, we just say we can help the company to do the bookkeeping. It is offering the service. But if we are offering the solutions, then we can say, identify a roadmap to the client today. Uh, the, your company is really small and then we can do the accounting, we do the bookkeeping for yourself, uh, for, the, for the company. And when the company grows to a certain milestone, and then we will say, is that possible for us to help you to set up your internal accounting department? And when the company growth will be uh, uh, in the next, next stage, then we may offering some tailor-made, very specific uh, uh, financial reporting advisory. Because say, for example, when the company growth up to a very critical mass, they may offer a share options to, to their staff. Then we can offer uh, 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 particular uh, advisory, accounting advisory solutions to the client. I think it's something maybe on a longer term. And also we have to stay clearly on our service commitment because today when I are uh, pitching a new case, most of the time because we are facing the resources issue, the client will ask, do you have the resources? When you, are you going to deliver? When are you going to compete the, the, the project? I think it's very critical. 
Another one is that we have to think how is our firm's image and reputation. Whether is the firm is well known in the market, for example, in this case, are we good in providing our advisory to the pharmaceutical uh, uh, business? Is there any track record? Is there any say how we can prove we are say expert in this uh, area? In, and also the style of your presentation of the proposal, including the visual aids, how you are going to use it, how you are going to present it in a professional way is, 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 is you maybe your winning factor. And in the Q&A, for example, if you've got a chance to do the presentation, in the Q&A, how you can understand the questions from the audience within a very short period of time, and also how you are going to give a response in particular, when sometimes you don't know the answer, is how you can present telling the clients that uh, you can check it and come back to them, and how at least, but although you don't know the answer, you can just to uh, 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 say let them know uh, at least you fully understand, and then you can do the appropriate research or in a general terms how to address. Not I would say not very specific, but on a general accounting report, uh, financial reporting requirement, general internal re control requirement, or other advisory matter to respond to the clients. And finally, and also the most importantly, cost and benefit analysis. Uh, it is very critical in, in a commercial world, but in your case, okay, in your case, uh, we assume you are no need to cover the pricing, okay? But you can also tell the client what is the benefit for them to obtain if they pick, uh, pick up your firm as the service provider or the solution provider. Uh, I just mentioned before, before, KYC is really critical, know your client, because in Hong Kong, we have a lot of anti-money laundering requirement. We have uh, a lot of ordinance for us to know the client, whether the client is good or, or bad. Is there any sanctions on this entity? For example, today, if you are going to provide service to some, uh, say, uh, uh, Russian kind, you have to think carefully because they are under sanction by the USA or the uh, 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 EU. And also because we are professional accountants, we have to observe the HKCPA Code of Professional Ethics in providing our uh, services. And also there is some, say, uh, uh, international, I would say firm, the advisory firm may have internal code of conduct. We have to also to have observe. Okay, so uh, I go to directly, right? Because in previously I or or uh, cover a little bit on the content of the uh, of the of the proposal. So there may be a covering letter. In this case, there is optional. We have a requirement on the executive summary. Uh, you have to uh, put a little bit sections on understand the needs. And also you have to identify solutions and you have to tell uh, who, we are, who you are and what is your team and the most importantly on your experience. In this case, we're saying that don't no need to cover the, the case questions, uh, the, the, the pricing. Okay, some tips. Uh, I always uh, say, starting from the very beginning, I am, am, keep on emphasizing, you should link the surface of the consultancy firm providing to uh, the business uh, proposal for solutions. You have to make it very, very clear. You are in a consulting firm, right? So you are selling your services. You hope Galaxy to pick you up and then to, to, to go for, uh, 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 to get a contract. And also you have to tell, uh, if the, I would say, if the proposal is only focused on how uh, the company can, can implement the strategy to go in, a, for example, to go in a new market, to offer a new product, without linkage to the service of the consultancy firm, I would say it would not be a good proposal, okay? It is very important. And you're just giving some gift to Galaxy, but you are not a good manager or partner in universe consultant and advisory firm. So, and also you have to say, maybe you say, you tell the audience, 
what is Galaxy expect to receive after from your services and, and also for the timeline and implementation plan. 